so what I thought I would spend time doing uh, at most of these virtual class sessions this semester is this. And uh, maybe uh, I should uh, remind you of what I did at the end of the at the end of the orientation session on Monday as as a contrast of what you shouldn't do and maybe what you should do. So at the end of the orientation session on Monday, this is what I did. Let me just show it and play it for um, a reminder of what you absolutely should not be doing. Uh, let me uh, navigate to the right place here, and then I will uh, unmute and share sound. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's it. Uh, let me sh change my share setting to include the sound and then play Type AI. So uh, I think some of you might be already doing that. But what I want to demonstrate isn't, you know, not doing this. Like if you're doing this, um, sorry, I shouldn't curse, so I won't curse. But if you're doing this, you're not doing yourself any favor. Like if you are just uh, using generative AI to basically cheat, then, you know, Oh, hey, is it gonna, can I do this? Oh, I eh, can't do that in my head. <laughs> so let me <laughs> wait for it to give me my answer. And, to, uh, oh, minus 40, I probably could have guessed that. <laughs> oh, I got two minuses. Um, now, if you are doing this, uh, you are not doing yourself any favor. And that uh, will be apparent when you do the required one-on-one -on -one meeting. But I do think there are ways to use the generative AI in a way that's actually helpful to you. So uh, let me do that in the first day is a virtual class session. Um, I can kind of give ChatGPT a different. So that's where we are. So let me start by uh, giving ChatGPT different um, instructions. And let me change my share setting so that uh, I'm not sharing the audio computer sound anymore, hopefully. Zoom has changed the, uh, some of the sharing things over the time. So. so that's what I want to try. Because uh, uh, generative AI, you know, it was it two years ago, year and a half ago. When it first came out, you know, it wasn't so good at physics questions. Like I would, never would have recommended it to anyone, uh, you know, year and a half ago. Um, but uh, these days, uh, it's pretty good. It, it, it's accuracy has got, definitely gotten good. Uh, and you, you know, saw me cheat there to just uh, um, get the answer without doing anything. So, you know, if you're using it to cheat, don't do that. But I believe you can use a generative AI to help you learn, almost like an automated tutor. And uh, you do have to take a certain precautions, and I'll be doing that at this session as a way of demonstrating. So, uh, let me uh, do a split screen thing here. So one screen, I'll have ChatGPT. And on my other screen, let me go into test student mode. And um, normally he's my worst student, but this session right now, he'll be doing something that's actually not a bad thing to do. <laughs> so, uh, so, so let's get started. And um, I'll have a test student to model something that, that I wouldn't mind seeing uh, people do. So, um, so uh, again, uh, wait, yeah, so again, uh, if you are, so this very first question, the way I did it in the orientation session, no, don't do that. Uh, don't just uh, paste the question in, get the answer, and, and it doesn't help you. So now, you know, in that particular attempt, I didn't give ChatGPT any instructions. And I, I, what it is is I really should have given it some instructions. So let me give it an instruction. Hi, uh, I'm working on my thermodynamics, uh, yeah, thermodynamics of uh, physics problem, physics homework, and I want to make sure that I'm learning how to solve the problems. I'll paste in the questions, and could you please not give me the full answer right away? Ask me uh, what I have done so far and help me with the next step. Help me learn. Oops. 
So with that, or prompt something like that, uh, it's done um, relatively well. So let me get a question that's uh, somewhat substantial and um, we'll get started there. Is this, uh, I think there are better questions. Um, maybe there aren't better questions. Oh, this is pretty substantial because it's calorimetry. Yeah. So let me paste this in and I'm just going to put in the question as a kind of way to uh, double check that the chat GPT has been properly prompted um, to not give me answer full answer right away. So I'm just giving it a question and then it'll say something. Okay, let's start by focusing on part A. Great. Yeah, a lot of the multi-part questions, each part is meant to build up. So uh, what have you done so far? in terms of identifying what you need to calculate the final temperature. Oh, I'm pretty lost. I skimmed the textbook, but uh, meh. <laughs> Let's see what it does. <laughs> I, I used to work at Student Learning Center at UC Berkeley, and you know, sometimes people will come in not having done any work, and if you are a good tutor, then you are supposed to, you know, provide some information and help. Uh, you know, I might get frustrated with you, but I chat GPT won't be frustrated as easily as I might get. Um, so yeah, this is probably a good starting place. This is a calorimetry question. So you kind of start from here. Did it mention it's calorimetry? Uh, maybe it didn't, but you are using conservation principle of conservation of energy. And uh, yeah, it explained that this is a formula for heat transfer. And then you explained each of the variables. Make sure you read it and understand it. Uh, mass, specific capacity, delta T, okay. Water gains heat, so it's final temperature increases. So loses heat, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, so let me actually read the question. Yeah, so water is at this temperature, steel is at this temperature, yeah. So, so that makes sense, what is the final temperature, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, set up an equation like this, and then so okay. Uh, all right, so in the question, I think I have uh, all the masses. Um, uh, I have all the initial temperatures. Uh, I don't know specific heat capacities. Am I supposed to know them? They're in the textbook. There's a whole table of them. Um, yeah, space capacities. So it's giving you this quantity. And, you know, they are probably right. For something like water, it's almost like a universal thing. Um, all the references will be the same. Still is probably uh, same enough. Uh, but let me see. Uh, can you make sure these uh, constants are the same ones in my textbook? OpenStax University Physics Volume 2. Wonder if we can do that. Um, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, 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 it can confirm, which is actually probably a good thing. So, you know, AI hallucination definitely was an issue for a while, but it looks like it's now. Um, at least uh, other meeting when, you not, when it's not sure. But, you know, you should uh, know where to look it up. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, at that level of stuff, you probably shouldn't be asking ChatGPT. Chat you, you should go through the textbook. Um, so this section says specific hit, so it's probably there. You know, look for uh, something that looks like a table. Um, this, yeah, this is the kind of thing. Uh, so, wait, is there still here? Yeah, iron still. Oh, wait, it's different. It's not the same as, yeah, yeah, so uh, you definitely should have changed it, uh, um, yeah. Okay, I was able to look it up. Mm. I'll give it a link. I don't know if it'll make use of that at all or not, but, uh, and it looks like the textbook has specific heat capacity of 452 joule per kilogram degree C. Um, 
Yeah, so constants, unless it's a universal constant, you'll have to make sure that you are using the textbooks constant because that's the one that um, the, pro the problem will be programmed in with. So, okay, we have the equation, this, this, uh, just one unknown. Yeah, yeah, so that's the next step. Uh, what does your equation look like now? Um, should I? Yeah, I guess I should. Um, so let me... Do it this way. Uh, I'm gonna write on screen and kind of share it uh, with the generative AI. So you could also type it, but sometimes uh, depending on how familiar with your with your typing conventions, maybe you're not sure what characters to use for what. So I'll just to give it this, uh, and I'm gonna make some of the common mistakes and not. Um, I'm gonna omit the units. I don't recommend that you do it. But let's suppose that you, like a typical student, <laughs> were writing something like this. 0 0.39, uh, 452, and just uh, skipping all the units. And the initial still temperature, 204 minus the final is equal to uh, 0 0.87. Again, just to be clear, I recommend writing all these units. You should be writing those units. but you know, someone who's struggling, <laughs> maybe in the habit of just the plugging in numbers. Uh, L, uh, T final minus 11. Okay, so that's uh, what a handwritten thing might look like. So I'll give that to ChatGPT and then um, see what it says next. I have this attached. Um, I I think uh, I can solve for T final, but I'd appreciate some help. Yeah. So, and it'll go through the algebra help. And, you know, I think uh, different people come in with a different level of preparation, previous experience. And so, you know, you are supposed to have taken and passed math 3B when you enter this class. But maybe you did that a long time ago, or maybe when you're going through calculus to uh, you're barely getting by, you barely passed, maybe. So if you need help with algebra, this is one of the things that ChatGPT can help. In my homework help videos, sometimes I'll be going through details of uh, algebra steps. Sometimes I'll be telling you, hey, in the interest of time, I'm going to do this in my head. You pause the video and <laughs> double check that I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> so, you know, I might not explain all the steps, especially if I feel people should know. And just because I think you should know doesn't mean I'm right in assuming that. And when I'm wrong, th this is where ChatGPT can help. Let me review its steps. Uh, so from here, say distribute both sides. Yeah, um, care, like distribute these products so that you have one term, that term on the right side. Yeah, it looks like it's all distributed. Combine like terms, by which meaning combining these terms on, to one side. Um, oh, and I guess it's uh, looking for me to do that. Uh, so let me just do that. Um, so combining like terms. So I can decide to combine T final on the left hand side. So this T final on the left hand side is what I'll do. And I kind of need it on the screen here. So, so this was already on the left hand side. So I already have minus 0 0.39 times 452 times t final and when I move this to the other side oh that's going to be minus that's fine uh, minus 0 0.87 times 4186 times t final is equal to and you know the rest of the numbers let me just to make things easier for myself and uh, calculate the number now again I don't recommend this I recommend that you work things out in symbols and um, you know, pr get practice doing that, but let's save a little bit of time today. So I have um, this, which should be moved from left to, to the right hand side. So, um, so I'll write minus 35961.12. Uh, and on the right hand side, I have um, this minus sign. So minus. Uh, and I'll just combine all the numbers so I have less to write. 0 0.87 times 4186 times 11. 40. Um, 
40,060.02. Okay. So, uh, if you feel that you can do the rest of the algebra, you know, solve for TF, combine the terms and isolate TF. So I can factor out TF and, um, you know, finish the calculation. So I can write a, a TF times the things that I factor the TF out of, minus 0 0.39 times 452 minus 0 0.87 times 41.86 is equal to, and let me work out the numbers. On the right hand side, and I have those extra signs because I made the wrong decision, but it's fine. Uh, so 40, um, the, the, that, plus 35961.12 will give us um, the total number on the right hand side minus 7602.14 uh, and uh, I can finish the rest but let's just check in with the chat GPT if this looks right um, how am I doing so far and hopefully it says, so far it's good. If it has a constructive criticism, I won't mind. But uh, mix up with how... Uh, yeah, I thought I did it fine. Um, yeah, I did it fine. Yeah. <laughs> there are different ways to simplify. <laughs> so, uh, well, let's make sure that I didn't make a mistake. So, um, so what the final answer should be is this divided by the sum of what's on the left. Um, and I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to do this cancellation of the minus signs, you know, multiply through minus one on both sides, then you get this. Um, so I have that whole thing divided by 0 0.39 times 452 plus, and I did the parenthesis, so it does the correct order of operations. It's equal to 19.91. Uh, I got 19.91 degrees C. Is that right? You'll probably say it's right. Yeah. And you for multiple questions, you can do one at a time. You can uh, submit one, and the system will know that you weren't doing an attempt for this, so you won't grade the parts that were blank. So, okay, final temperature makes sense. And then, um, let's see. Charter, color, between, yeah, okay. Uh, so for part B, let's say we'll do this. Uh, yes, and I think a part B is, uh, let me pick a close but wrong answer. Glass beaker, which is in turn, uh, same time will affect the answer. Uh, I think the final temperature will be uh, significantly lower. Now that's wrong. It should be lower, but uh, very minimally. Um, hopefully it knows what the correct answer is. Um, so uh, let me do the submission. So it, you know, repeated my mistake. And then, um, yeah, so the system will tell you that's wrong. Uh, so I'll say I submitted the answer, but this it says it's uh, wrong. Uh, 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 can you correct the mistake? And it should be explaining how the uh, the heat capacity of the glass beaker is really small compared to the heat capacity of water. Uh, yeah, it's small relative to water and still water especially. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it'll be sometimes wrong. And this is where actually the fact that you have an auto-graded uh, system helps because uh, when it tells you you are wrong and, you know, um, you can get generative AI to fix itself. <laughs> sometimes, you know, you can get slighted. You can, like, tell it, oh, this uh, thing that was actually right was wrong. And it'll, you know, it's a little bit too compliant. Um, it'll, like, correct itself when it doesn't need to correct itself. Um, but, you know, when the homework system told you that it was wrong, then... <laughs> Probably, you know, probably was wrong unless there was a mistake in the question. Um, yeah. All right. 
so I'll say yes, please. To the question, would you like to move on to part C? And it'll probably give me the all the detailed steps. Um, so it's a modification of the earlier question e equation it gave, except now it's added a class. Uh, in some sense, it's actually pretty simple because um, when you simplify the whole thing, because you know, a change of temperature of the glass and the water is the same, it amounts to so it, you could write it like what it's doing, but given that these two terms are the same, you can basically modify these terms and. Uh, and yeah, so so that looks good so far. I, we have 20 minutes and I think that's enough time for maybe two more questions if I'm not too, you know, slow in working through this. So I'll just say, all right, I, I think uh, I can take it from here. Uh, cal calorimetry does uh, get a little bit nasty uh, in terms of algebra. Well, uh, you, you know, here's one thing I can tell you. I, as your instructor, I don't like calorimetry questions. So unless you have to do calorimetry in some setting, like a lab uh, two weeks from now, you will have to use calorimetry. Then, then you know you have to. But otherwise, I won't give you calorimetry questions just to do calorimetry questions because I, I, I just think uh, uh, they are more of a chemistry question than physics question. So I won't give you calorimetry questions unless I have to. So um, black body radiation can be fun. But this is also kind of an easy question. Once you get the right formula. Uh, so maybe let me ask this. Uh, so I'll ask this to ChatGPT. Uh, uh, my professor, professor says that this is an easy question once I know the right formula. But I don't know the right formula. Uh, what's the right formula? By the way, um, this is, um, if you ask me, I would, I, excuse me if I seem annoyed um, if you, I were asked the questions like this. I, I just think uh, people asking for the right formula is not a productive question. Uh, let's see how ChatGPT handles a potentially unproductive question. Uh, yeah, but this is the kind of question where you just have to know Stepan Boltzmann law. You're not gonna derive it from something. You just have to know, and and you just have to plug in the numbers. It's asking for total power. Does it say uh, it, it recognizes the spherical black body? Yeah. It, so it gives you the um, yeah. That's the second right formula you have to know. Uh, the surface area of a sphere, and yeah, I guess uh, yeah. Uh, uh, let me. Give it a try. Uh, I'll let you know if I can get it right. So let's bring up my calculator. Oh, let me use uh, Wolfram Alpha for this. Um, so one of the advantages of Wolfram Alpha is that it can do a lot of the unit calculations for you. And uh, that's one advantage. And, and I'll mention the second advantage in a bit. So in Wolfram Alpha, for the total power, I'm trying to put in the MECVD, that's one. Uh, Stefan Boltzmann constant, which I have, 5.67 e, uh, the, in the calculator notation, uh, watt per meter square times Kelvin to the fourth power. You can also say Stefan Boltzmann constant, and Wolfram Alpha will know, that, uh, know the value of the Stefan Boltzmann constant. That times... Uh, the area. So that was uh, 4 pi r. So here um, the first body is yeah, 6 centimeters. And this is where Wolfram Alpha really shines. So typically you would want to convert this to uh, meters. 0. Uh, 0. 0.06 meters. If you don't, in Wolfram Alpha it's unit aware. So it'll do the unit conversion for you in the background. So as long as you're typing in all the units, you don't have to convert any, any unit to yourself. Temperatures, you probably don't want, you do want to be a little bit careful. Uh, I Like I would not enter this in Celsius units. Sometimes it doesn't convert it well to Kelvin. Uh, it's a matter of recognizing when you have to convert. Um, so with that, when I put that in, it should give me an answer in what? A answer in what? I have 18.9 watt. And uh, this other advantage of using Wolfram Alpha is that it's uh, a lot easier to um, edit. 
So for part B, the only thing that's changing is the temperature. So I could just uh, change this and it'll work. And uh, just to demonstrate, for um, universal physical constants, you can just uh, give it a Boltzmann constant. You can just give it a name and it'll uh, run through the, the input interpretation. You should make sure that it understood you correctly. And then when you calculate, you get 3118 watts. 3118. Uh, so, so yeah, let's just give it a little update. Uh, I got it. 18.9 uh, watt and 3118 watt. Uh, let's see if we will recognize that as correct. Probably. Yeah. yeah man. You already knew it was correct, but if you are carrying on a conversation with the, the chatbot, then... <laughs> uh, let's see. This is an ideal guess law question. Uh, maybe? Yeah. I think... Uh, let me see which question... So let me do one of the ideal guess law question and then um, and then look at the time. So let me start out with this one and then uh, I'll see if I have enough time for one question or two more questions. All right, this is my next uh, question. Uh, someone mentioned ideal guess law. By the way, um, let's see. So I guess for this question, it won't matter. Uh, a lot of the standard resources will use this because, um, you know, chemistry, that's where ideal gas law is most common. The physics version of ideal gas law doesn't use moles. It, we just count the number of molecules. And instead of the gas constant, we use the Boltzmann constant. Uh, you will see me use those consistently in the lecture. Uh, so, uh, so let me actually see if uh, ChatGPT can change that. Uh, the professor mentioned uh, something about not using the Avogadro's number, and that uh, his version of the ideal gas law uses Boltzmann constant. What's that about? Um, I mean, it, for this question, it actually doesn't matter at all. Yeah, yeah. So this is the version you will see me cons consistently use. Um, yeah, we don't need to worry about either because it's just going to cancel out. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's look at the rest. So interesting how changes. Yeah. Pressure at the bottom and top. Yeah. The one thing to remember is that the top it's the atmospheric pressure. So volume increased by. By the way, why is it giving me the entire solution? Uh, so it's uh, really up to you. Uh, so again, one thing I will emphasize over and over is that what's important is that you are learning physics. Uh, if you are not learning physics, however you are getting through the class. All of that will come out when we do the required one-on-one -on -one meeting. So whatever you did that didn't lead to your learning, that didn't lead to your learning physics, didn't help you. And whatever it is you're doing that did lead to your learning physics, great, it will help you. And you know, in the required one-on-one -on -one meeting, it will all come out. So, uh, so it's, I'm just making sure that I read through these descriptions, and the descriptions make sense. Volume increases by 80%. That means, yeah, 1.8, like 80% plus the original 100%. Um, temperatures, yeah, yeah, you do need them in Kelvin. They do have to be Kelvin because uh, absolute temperature scale is what you need. Um, bottom that, yeah, top that, uh, I think that's right. Yeah, surface, atmospheric pressure at the bottom due to depth of the leg. Now, does it include the atmospheric pressure? It should, um, the fact that, that, okay, oh, I see, try and say, so, okay, it didn't give me everything. Uh, okay, uh, so, let's see, uh, let me give it a kind of a partial version of the equation, and then see if it'll help me with the next. So, with the information it's given so far, so I have, um, 
so P1, uh, I, I would say P1 is the bottom. It, it, with that interpretation, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, so. I don't need to, to see full screen. Okay, so I'll say um, P1, uh, write down P2 plus rho GH. P2 plus rho GH times um, V1, I think I'm leaving it as it is, divide by T1. Um, let's just plug in the numbers it's given me. 277 Kelvin. It's not really what I would recommend, but again, uh, if you have to get started somewhere, get started somewhere. What I would recommend is um, uh, solving for H um, algebraically without plugging in any numbers. That, that's uh, how you should uh, get trained into doing. But, um, you know, if you have to start somewhere, great, start somewhere. Uh, for V2, uh, 1.8 V1. 1.8 V1 times 286k uh, and did it already mention solving for height h uh, yeah solve for depth height h uh, so i'll do this i'll say that i have this equation uh, i have this but i'm stro uh, struggling with the uh, algebra to uh, isolate h uh, whether I do next. I mean, I hope uh, this is not a difficult algebra, but if it is, you know, you should be able to get help from somewhere. So yeah, it got that and cancel. Yeah, yeah, for you one, you can just get rid of it, which is nice. And yeah, do the number thing. Yeah, that's step by step. Uh, I mean, this part wasn't entirely necessary, but fine. So to repeat the front of the size, yeah. Yeah, P2 is an atmospheric pressure. Now that's the important thing. You have to plug this in in the basic SI unit. Pascal is the basic SI unit. Uh, yeah, so let's just see if uh, uh, when my online... I thought I... Didn't I have all from alpha? Did I close it? Um, so let's type that in. 0 0.743 times... You know, I can just say one atmosphere. All from alpha will interpret it and give me... Uh, correct one. I don't know if I can say density of water, so I'll put in a thousand kilogram per cubic meter uh, times 9.8 meter per second squared. Um, and all from alpha will give me an answer. Uh, I got 7.68 meters. Um, and it'll probably say that's correct. 7.68. Yeah, and it's uh, fresh water, so um, the density we use is fine. Yeah, that's it. All right, looks like we have uh, probably enough time for one more question. So um, let's find a question to try. This, oh, uh, maybe that's a better question than these other ones. Um, it's definitely the more fun one. Um, yeah, let's do this. Um, so here, um, you can, there are a couple different ways you can relate to that. Uh, you can talk about the internal energy of a system or um, um, which will, you know, give you expressions that look like this. Um, so the, the, the average internal energy per particle um, of uh, something is um, one thing. Yeah, atoms. Uh, so we'll say, assume it's like a monatomic gas. That should be three halves Boltzmann constant times T. So, um, and that internal energy is the average translational kinetic energy. If it involves rotational kinetic energy, then this factor changes. Um, but uh, what do I ask of ChatGPT? Um, I'll just say I'm pretty lost. Uh, let's see how it'll explain it. Uh, 
Yeah, it'll just give you the formula. And I think that's basically the intended... Um, it's one of those questions where if you know the formula, great. <laughs> you can answer it that way. Uh, that's one of the reasons I uh, am not... I, I want to just skip through uh, uh, thermodynamics pretty quickly because... Um, kind of questions that you can answer by knowing the right formula, those are the easy questions. They are not quite as interesting, at least to us a physicist. Uh, so, um, so that's why I want, I'm so eager to get to uh, the electrostatics as soon as we can. Three times a Boltzmann constant. Um, and it'll give me a number. Uh, so 3 billion uh, degrees of Celsius. 3.09 degrees of so, three, oh, nine, um, yeah, billion. Uh, it had degrees Celsius, but at that point, the Celsius Kelvin doesn't matter. Uh, uh, thank you, I got it. Uh, T equals 3.09 uh, times 10 to the 9K. Now, for times I use the X, let me see if ChatGPT understands it, or if it gets confused that it's X and not times a symbol. I'm not sure. Yeah, because uh, it, it knows that um, people misuse <laughs> character X to mean times uh, from time to time. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. yeah, so five more minutes. Um, and so this set has a lot of questions where you just have to know the formula. This is another one. Uh, you kind of have to know the um, formula. So there's one in the textbook. Let's compare what ChatGPT says uh, with this one. How about this one? So this I normally wouldn't recommend, uh, you know, just asking ChatGPT to basically solve it. Uh, but, you know, I gave the prompt up there asking it to give me step-by-step -step steps. And, um, and this is one of those questions where you just have to know the formula. I'm not expecting you to be able to derive the formula for the mean free path. Your textbook went through some discussion and it derived this. Let's just double check with the textbook that it is the correct formula. Because sometimes based on what assumptions you make, sometimes the formula might change. So I want to say it's under molecular model of an ideal guess, maybe. If it's not there, it'll be in one of the other sections here. Ideal guess law, ideal the model. Van der Waals, PV diagrams, maybe it's not here. I always forget every semester. Um, Maybe it's towards the end. Distribution of molecular speeds. Um, oh, yeah, maybe. I guess maybe you need to know molecular speeds for the mean free path. I'm not seeing it. Um, just one other place before I give up and go to searching. Under, oh, maybe here because there's RMS speed there. Uh, I mean, after this, there's really only one section left. So, um, average kinetic energy per, um, and then vapor pressure. Yeah, mean free path. Yeah, there's this. Lambda is equal to, what's capital V? Um, or do they, oh, I see, they go through the using ideal gas law to get that. Uh, KVT over four, huh. So there's this a factor of four. Um, uh, so let's give it a try and see what we get. If that's wrong, we'll say, tell ChatGPT, hey, we were wrong, and then, um, uh, let me just continue to use O from alpha, and then we'll see what it does. Um, so we have square root of Boltzmann constant times temperature to 94 Kelvin divided by square root of 2 times pi times pressure, 1.11, center power of 5 Pascal uh, times Lambda, 4.81 E minus 8 meter. Wait, is that what they were asking for? R. Uh, yeah, radius R of the methane molecule. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it'll say my answer is wrong. But we'll see what it does. 
So we'll put in 4.137 times 10 to the minus 10. I have 10, 10 to the so 4.137. Based on the discrepancy in the equations, yeah, it says it's incorrect. I tried, uh, and it says it's uh, incorrect. What's up? Let's see if it gets the mistake in the formula it's using. Yeah, I mean, that, that's fine. Don't know if that's wrong. Uh, um, nope. Still wrong. Uh, wait, analyzing? I don't know what it's analyzing. It might be um, generating a calculator core. Not sure. Said, nope, still wrong. Uh, if it doesn't get it, then... Um, Expect format or exact value. Yeah, it, it's not a rounding issue. Uh, um, so let's do this. Uh, um, so we'll say some error here. And we'll just say that uh, we have this from textbook. What could it possibly be wrong? Uh, we have this from the text of a, I think the equation is wrong. Uh, I mean, their equation is wrong, but maybe they'll correctly interpret the intent. Yeah, there's an extra, yeah, it gets there, wow. Yeah, yeah, so it'll recalculate and it'll probably be right. So let me just uh, do my own recalculation. Again, one nice thing about using, uh, oh, yeah. Using uh, Wolfram Alpha, you can just uh, edit it. You can put in the corrections. So, uh, yeah, half as much as before. That's probably right. Uh, 0.07. Yes. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not fully sure just because this is a kind of topic that I don't deal with too often. If uh, it, uh, what it is, is that the formula that ChatGPT gave initially was wrong, or if the, some of the assumptions being used in the textbook is different. I don't know. Um, this is, <laughs> um, so, you know, with the topics like this, what I do recommend is, you know, do read through your textbook and kind of be familiar with the concepts that are involved. But know that um, I wouldn't, I won't expect you to drive what you hear. But um, it is worthwhile to read it through and uh, make sure you understand some portion of it. So, uh, all right, uh, thank you. So I think that's all the time we have um, playing with the ChatGPT. Uh, so yeah, and that was everything here. So um, let me uh, say goodbye to people joining by recording the video.